Happy New Year, Locked On USC. So we still got one more game to play. So let's talk about what makes winning fun. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Culkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC your first listen every day. Whether you are watching me on YouTube or wherever you like to download your podcast, we are free. And Happy New Year. Welcome to another year of Locked On USC. If you are watching on YouTube and you haven't done it yet, let's make that resolution. Do me a favor. Hit that red subscribe button. It would mean a whole heck of a lot. And to those of you who have... Thank you so very, very much. This episode of Locked On USC is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. That's Locked On Jobs. Check out that banner right there. Get that up there for you. Okay, so it's a new year, and that means it's time to make resolutions. Remember, at the end of 2022, we uh, did our Good Riddance episode. This isn't so much a resolution episode, but that's just one of the things that we're going to talk about. In 2023, um, we want one resolution from Alex Grinch, defensive coordinator, to never allow uh, his team that he's coaching, specifically USC, uh, to be embarrassed like his defense was against Utah. And it wasn't just Utah. There were others before that conference championship game. Uh, but that's the the resolution from, from Alex Grinch or from the defense to – to be accountable, to own their performance, and to get better. Lincoln Riley made a vow. Uh, he said over the weekend, "You know that that you know that football game. It, it got away from us. Uh, we got away from a lot of what we had done well to be in that football game." He's talking about the Pac-12 Conference Championship game, and we've tried to identify reasons of why that happened and why some of the trust in what we were doing wasn't there, specifically in the second half. And we've tried to learn from it, and we've kind of vowed to be better in this game and to be be the team that we were the previous 12 games. And so that's been a big point of emphasis for us. We've we've certainly vowed not to repeat that again, end quote. Well, he, he made the resolution, made the vow, Well, you can't spell resolution without the word solution. So in order to work on the solution, um, Lincoln said, honestly, the preparation and the way the guys have approached the last 27 days would suggest to me that they are very excited to play this game. And they understand the significance both for this team and future USC teams. Uh, he continued, you'll remember kind of the last moments that this team uh, will ever have together. So it's a very, very important to us. Our preparation suggests that we understand that, and hopefully our play does as well. Uh, the USC players echoed uh, that sentiment pretty much all week, uh, and there's been no let up um, the sentiment's been that they've, they've had no let up uh, this past week of practice. It's, it's been the same that they had throughout the season. So where the coaching staff um, has acknowledged that things got away in the fourth quarter, um, Bryson Shaw, um, he meant when I spoke to him uh, after practice on, on Saturday, Uh, He acknowledged that being embarrassed uh, will be just one of the tools uh, 
that they'll use to motivate themselves against Tulane. He said, quote, of course, of course, we did not play to our level, to our level of standard, but we owned it and took accountability for it. What I love about what Bryson Shaw said right there was the accountability part. Uh, because I live by the motto, and I used to use it um, when I was coaching, that your best ability is your accountability. So for me, it was nice to hear uh, Bryson kind of, you know, echo that sentiment. And then he, you know, he also quickly let the media know that for, you know, for all the shade and all, you know, for all the heat and grief uh, that his position coach, defensive coordinator Alex Grinch is taking from the fans and from some of the media, um, I think I've been pretty fair and balanced with him, but uh, there have been some out there who are, you know, who've asked for him to be replaced, for him to be removed. Uh, Bryson said he is still hands down the best coach I've had, ever had. Motivation, everything. He's a beast. We're not executing. It's got nothing to do with him. End quote. So, uh, I love Bryson's passion um, the, and the way he defended his coach and took accountability. And um, essentially what he's saying is that you know, the guys who play on defense, they let the coach down. And I get that. Uh, but you know, the coach does, does bear some of the responsibility. Even Bryson will, will admit to that. Um, Tooley. Nick Figueroa, all the guys who, all the guys who spoke, you know, it's, you win as a team, you lose as a team. Um, the players get critiqued when they miss a tackle. The coaches, obviously, they get slammed, they get hammered. Um, when they don't, when the fans and the media start to nitpick and they don't see uh, improvement throughout the season. Uh, but the new year, so we, we talked about, you know, the resolutions and the solutions going about, you know, making sure you follow up on it. But coming into a new year, um, you should also be looking to have fun. It shouldn't always just be about work. So what was nice um, is when I went over to at t Stadium on Saturday, you know, in one corner of the Cowboys locker room, uh, there were the, you had the Trojan special teams players, the specialists. They were showing off their uh, their new lawnmower dance moves, which is essentially Dennis Lynch on his hands, a couple of uh, his teammates holding up his legs, doing a wheel, wheel barrel crawl. Uh, in a different corner of the locker room, excuse me, you had Nick Figueroa, who was taking a break from being the uh, interviewee, and he became the interviewer when uh, he began to ask uh, teammate Tuli Tuiapolo to uh, about his bowling skills. Apparently, Tuli had an off day, <laughs> according to the All-American. However, before Nick was having some fun um, mocking us in the media and asking some of the you know dumb questions that they get asked all the time, and uh, I take accountability for that, uh, Nick was talking about how this could be his final game in any uniform, let alone you know, USC's card on gold, because, look, no one knows what the future holds professionally. Um, you know, Nick reminded everyone that this was just his second bowl game since he's been at USC. Last one, 2019, the Holiday Bowl, loss. In 2020, after USC played in the conference championship game and lost, didn't go to a bowl game. And then everyone, as a reminder, 2021, four and eight, you didn't earn a bowl game. So he said, quote, you know, it's starting to hit me a little bit. I think there's definitely emotion after the end of the regular season, Petco championship game. After Notre Dame 2 being senior day, we had team meetings today that were, we were talking about what this game means. And the time is now. All those things you said you were going to do that should have happened, here it is, end quote. And then he continued. But we're really a close team. Guys that are teammates are also going to be friends for a very long time. Forever. Guys that are actually friends. So I think that's a big part of it. Yeah, it's been a good ride, end quote. 
Nick has had what I, I what Nick was trying to say there, and hopefully I was able to convey it a little bit was even though he hasn't experienced all the winning that he you know maybe wanted to have, he's had just as much fun developing those relationships that are going to last a lifetime. Um, it's been a fun season, as fun as a season as I've had coaching in a long time. And I think a lot of our staff members would say the same thing, and certainly we don't want it to end, but it's obviously a great opportunity to try and finish on a high note. That was Coach Riley talking about having fun. Travis Dye um, recently said this past week that he's had more fun playing football this season than at any other point in his life. Quote, I've never had this much fun in my life playing football, even in the meeting rooms. It's just somehow, some way turned into be fun. But the thing is, with this team, we know when it's time to work, too. We had a good mesh that's on this team, end quote. <coughs> Excuse me. I know personally uh, from talking with folks that uh, even though... <coughs> He won while he was at Oregon and in high school with Pop Warner. Um, and this isn't Travis talking. This is other people that I've spoken to. Um, guys who played for Mario up at, and his staff at Oregon, it wasn't fun. Yeah, they won, but it wasn't fun. So having fun, you know, that's a byproduct of winning, but it goes deeper than that as well. Part of having fun comes from not having fun. Um, again, on Saturday, this is from Justin Dietrich. I, I think he summarizes it perfectly. Quote, I think just the shared suffering, you know, all the years, I'm not talking about records or anything. I'm just talking about training, classes, all of it. For it to just come to pay off, be fortuitous, and to win games and stuff. So I think that has definitely added to the experience. I think everyone coming on this team, they all come from different backgrounds. Some transferring, some from a four and eight season. So we were torn down to the last brick, in a sense. So we're able to build back up with each other. And it's been an awesome experience, end quote. That's what Lincoln Riley did in just one year at USC. He took a group of guys who were, for the most part, weren't having fun or winning, and ask them to trust the process. Now USC is having fun, and they have, and they're, they're having fun differently. You know, every you you hear different players describe how they're having fun, um, and now they have a chance to win twelve games for the first time since two thousand eight. And I know the future is filled with more fun coming up. So, happy New Year! 2023 USC Trojan fans. There's different ways to having fun. Winning, yeah. But behind the scenes, there's a lot more going on that makes the experience fun for these players. Let's try to remember that. <clears throat> All right. So these days, every potential new hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Then add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile. That way you can spread the word that you're hiring. They have simple tools like screening questions that make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experiences so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified camps you want to talk to faster. Post your jobs for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Okay, so um, on Friday, Trojan quarterback Caleb Williams, he made the claim that he was not only going to be start playing, but he will be starting the Cotton Bowl. 
And he also doesn't anticipate being limited by any hamstring injury that he's, you know, that we all saw, saw him sustain uh, in the conference championship game against Utah. Well, Sunday morning, Lincoln Riley confirmed that his Heisman Trophy winner, uh, USC's eighth, by the way, um, he has recovered enough from the injury that uh, he's apparently well ahead of his uh, of expectations, and the rehab has gone well. Quote, he's ready to go. He has progressed maybe a little faster than what we anticipated. Certainly very fortunate on our part that we had the opportunity to have a month really before this game. I mean, had it been even two weeks, I doubt we would he would be available. And so that extra time has helped. And he's done a good job, along with our medical staff, from the second that Pac-12 game was over, really working hard to get back to it. And he's practiced really well with no limitations. And we expect that he will play very well, end quote. So, assuming everyone is being truthful and not bending the truth to play you know, mind games with Willie Fritz and Tulane, um, Caleb Williams is starting. And he'll be playing behind an offensive line that will have Cortland Ford starting at left tackle and Bobby Haskins at right tackle. Your interior line, uh, I, we know for a fact that Justin Dietrich, well, I know for a fact that Justin Dietrich will be the starting center. The other two guys playing on the interior will be Gino Quinones and Jonah Mahan, uh, who's on the left side, who's on the right side. Everyone's assuming Gino will be left guard, Jonah right guard. We'll see. Now, uh, personally, I'm a little skeptical about um, Caleb's recovery. Um, and, I'm, and I will be until I see this version of USC's offensive line perform. Uh, when Caleb spoke on Saturday, I, he didn't really say anything new, but I just want to kind of stay on tangent with this episode, he did say this. Our belief and trust in each other is, I mean, I'd say it's probably one of the best in the country. That comes from all the trial and tribulations that we've had so far in two years. Uh, he's referring to his his relationship with Lincoln Riley, which has been a lot, uh, which has been a lot for a first first year and a second year quarter quarterback and coach. So it's special. And I'm glad to be able to get another year and possibly another two years with him. Dramatic pause. It's helped build my confidence and his confidence in me. It's been awesome. Look, I don't think anybody anticipates Caleb Williams sticking around for two more years at USC. Uh, but we do know that he'll be back in 2023. Uh, when Caleb was reminded on Saturday about missing the college football playoffs, uh, and asked, you know, how satisfying how satisfying it is uh, to have USC's program um, that hasn't been great as of late back. Um, Caleb said, you know, quote, at the beginning, we wanted to get you. We just wanted to get USC back to where it was. What all of the, what all of you might remember USC as. It's just a stepping stone to where we want to be and where we're trying to go and where where we will be, end quote. So, um, yeah, it's, Caleb is very measured with, with how he says things and what he says. Um, and, and again, that's, that's part of who Caleb is. He, He's a great guy in the locker room. He's a great player on the field, but he's also a he's a, he's approaching this very professionally. So, uh, yeah, I know that was a little bit of a tease. Will we see him for two more years at USC? Probably not. But we know that in 2022 was just a stepping stone, not just for him, but the program. 2023, it's it's playoffs or bust. It's it's championship or bust. Um, I, I think they surpassed even their own expectations. They won't admit that, 
But uh, I don't think anybody anticipated this team getting to where they were. And we talked about this uh, on Locked on USC last week in, in another episode. Uh, Kyle Ford's another player. Uh, he was asked, you know, what the experience has been like at the Cotton Bowl. And he said, it's been great coming out, be able to go to a different state with all of your boys. It's been able and to be able to be in a hotel and do some fun things around the city, um, around the whole state, city, everything. It's been amazing. So, you know, getting to get it. So, you know, getting to get away with your brothers and still do the thing that we all love to do has been really awesome. Great time. So again, just I want to stay on, on on the tangent on the topic of the show about the resolution solution, working hard, but also having fun. Camaraderie is fun, and the Trojans they're having fun. <laughs> Kale is back and healthy, allegedly. The defense is motivated. Let's uh, let's start twenty twenty three off with uh, win number 12 for the 2022 season. And we're going to see if uh, if all that translates to uh, to the future. Will, can USC take everything that they've just been talking about? Having fun, working hard, making vows. Can that translate into win number 12 in, in, in the first year? I wouldn't bet against it. But what you can do is head on over to Bet Online because betonline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer and esports. We've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those over there as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head on over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. All right. I just, I'm going to end this first episode of Locked on USC with a thank you to all the folks and organizers for the Cotton Bowl event. The hosts here have been, have done an A plus job. Fantastic. Um, they come from the accommodations, the Omni Hotel downtown. Nice, uh, great view from my from my room. I got to watch the uh, New Year's Eve fireworks show last night. Again, fantastic. Okay, the food. Yeah, uh, Greg Katz from uh, inside the Trojan Huddle over there at WeRSC.com. He would appreciate this. Um, he uh, he loves. When he travels to road games, he loves to break down the food and you know the food fair that that other stadiums prepare um, in the press box. Well, let me tell Greg and everybody out there, this thing was awesome. Three meals a day, or you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and it's good stuff, um, high quality hotel buffet style stuff. Um, one observation: they love to put sausage. In everything. <laughs> if they get pasta, we'll throw sausage in it. It's, it's an amazing thing. Uh, and the food, not only was the food great, but the desserts were doubly amazing. Really good. Um, they have this snack bar. They have a hospitality room where all this takes place. And um, you walk in there and there's, first thing you see is this Snap. Well, first thing you see is TVs everywhere. Um, they have massage chairs. Yeah, those things are pretty cool. Um, really nice massage chairs that you will fall asleep if you allow yourself. <clears throat> they have a snack shack that would make any little league snack shack jealous. I mean, it really like candy, savories. Water, cokes, I mean, everything. Um, like I said, pool tables. They had video games from the eighties, Pac-Man, uh, Space Invaders, A one setup. 
I mean, it literally made the Pac-12 championship game experience seem like it, we were being sent down to the minor leagues. It was just night and day, the experience I'm having out here in Dallas. Amazing. And I got to give a little bit of a mea culpa when it comes to barbecue. Yeah, Texas does it, right? Um, so we tried to do the Pecan Lodge on New Year's Day. It was closed, the one downtown. So we literally walked down the street less than a quarter of a mile. And we went to Terry Black's. Yeah. The best brisket I've ever had in my entire life. It was really good. <laughs> um, so I can't compare it to Pecan Lodge, which I heard is pretty good as well. However, they were closed. So until further notice, Terry Blacks gets the best brisket award from Locked On USC and Mark Colton. All right. That's it for this first episode of 2023. I will be back for a Cotton Bowl review after the game on Monday. And we'll get everything followed up with then. But until then, everyone, you kind of know what to do. In 2023, we know what the team is going to try and do. The fans, this is your resolution. Get out there, support the team. Make that vow that you're going to support this team. And you're going to have fun because they're having fun. That's what it's all about.